Uh, not yet. Sorry. <laughs> I am not. I I was tempted, but you know, we. <laughs> <laughs> you go get me one. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our virtual Sunday morning service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you've joined us, either on Facebook Live or on Zoom. Thank you for being here. Let's join together in our congregational chant. <laughs>
And so with that, I invite us to join together in consciousness to know this truth of our oneness with the one together. And so let's take this moment to turn our attention inward, to get still, and to open ourselves to that part of us that can sense connection beyond our physical senses, that can sense our connection with all the life around us. Because truly, on the unseen side of life, we all are interconnected in the one life, the one power, the one infinite, unconditional love vibration that is God. Everything is created out of this one, and this one's nature is fully and equally present in every point of creation, including in, through, and as me, as every person gathered for this virtual service this morning, as every being everywhere. And I know that we come together this morning called by that vibration of spirit to awaken to itself, to have a greater knowingness and realization and experience of itself in each of us. And I know that every part of this service supports that intention. We're uplifted and touched by the love of all of those who have volunteered their time for this service, by the love that we can feel in coming together virtually. I know that we are uplifted by our music this morning through Sam and Karen and Jody, our soloist, and through Dean leading our chants. And I absolutely know that we hear the perfect word of God through Dr. Mark today, that we hear what we have come to hear to know that truth of our divine nature and to experience it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks for all the ways that spirit is revealing itself to and through us during this time. And in gratitude, I just release this word knowing it's already so in the mind of God, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me So now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, please join in our congregational chant, uh, song. <laughs> Joy and peace in my heart, always I feel. Joy and peace in my mind, God within revealed. 
And so, this is the time in our service where we give ourselves the gift of just getting still for a moment. We are going to meditate for the next five minutes. I know, I can hear all the applause coming through the, <laughs> the internet. <laughs> so, I invite you to just sit up straight in whatever you're seated right now. To get still, turn your attention inward, close your eyes. And for the next five minutes, just silently repeat to yourself, God is the love that I am. That's our mantra. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
sacred journey of the soul. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I am truly blessed, perfect, and whole. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. When one door closes, one more opens. For I know wonders never cease. One day ends, another begins. And with wings upon my feet, I am spinning, weaving truth in motion taking flight as I believe that these gifts here before me are my calling to receive on this sacred journey of the soul oh yes I know Yes, I know. I am truly blessed, perfect, and whole. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. As the sunlight shadows start to fall, a silhouette, a color, paints the wall, the reflection of the one, and all my heart desires. I am grateful now that I can serve in the name of love and rest assured that this voyage I am on is filled with passion, prayer, and fire. On this sacred journey of the soul, oh, yes, I know. Yes, I know. I Yes, I know. Oh, yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I All right, great, thank you so much. Good morning, welcome to church. It's great to have you here with us today. So as we begin, I just want to share um, a couple of thoughts. I think that we are in a time where we need to be judicious. We need to be a little bit ju uh, detached, I would say. Be, um, and what I mean by judicious is that we need to be judicious about how much we let in at this time, yeah? You understand that we wanna be uh, careful, I think, about the choices we make, uh, where we choose, where we engage, and who we engage with. You know, it's just all part of learning how to navigate this very interesting time. This morning, I'm going to talk about healing Saul. Now, the Saul that I'm talking about is the Saul that shows up in the New Testament, and in the New Testament, Saul is a character who is devoted to persecuting Christians. Mm -hmm. And he is now on the road to Damascus where he's gonna do some big time persecuting, yeah? And uh, 
this light shones, shines round about him, and he falls to his knees. And a voice says to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he says to light, what do you want me to do? And he says, go into the city, and I'll tell you when you get there, which is something that often happens in the Bible. I'll tell you when you get there. Just do the next step, you know? Very rarely are we given the whole scenario, you know? So now Paul has been blinded by the light. This is what's happened. Paul has been blinded by the light, and he is three days without sight, without food, without drink, and his companions take him by the hand, and they lead him to Damascus. And there, a disciple of Jesus, Ananias, uh, has a vision. And he, in the vision, he goes to help, Paul, uh, uh, help uh, Saul, Saul of Tarsus. But when he has this vision, he says, gee, Lord, um, I've heard of him, and he's doing a lot of really bad stuff. You know, are, are you sure you want me to go and help this guy? He's working actively against you, right? And, and what Ananias hears is this. He hears, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. So now I've read this a thousand times. And the thing that stood out for me this time was, he is a chosen vessel for me. We don't know always how God is using other people in our life or in the world. Now, Paul looked like he was doing something completely different. And then he has this blinding experience with the light, right? And now he's going to do something different. So Ananias meets Saul, and it says he's filled with the Holy Ghost, and it's as if scales fall from Saul's eyes. And he regains his sight, and he arises and is baptized. And he stayed with the disciples for a number of days in Damascus, and Paul goes on to be the biggest, the biggest proponent of Christianity. From being one of its biggest detractors, he is now the biggest proponent. So Saul has been, had been very, very successful at persecuting Christians. He has the experience of blinding light, Blinded for three days, he is transformed. This is the point. He is transformed, and it happens like that, in the twinkling of an eye. And so what he does, what he has to do, what is absolutely necessary for this transformation to really sink in and take effect, is he has to let go. Let go of what? Let go of an old way. Let go of what he thought. Let go of his way of being. Let go of what was habitual. Let go of what was known. He lets go of a way of being that, again, is 180 degrees different. He was going one way, and now he's going to go completely the other. Because that old thinking, maybe for us it's like old baggage, uh, some accumulation. We have to let it all go. Why do I need to let it go? Because any over-attachment to this world as we know it has to be let go. What do I mean by over-attachment? By over-attachment, I mean any thinking that we think, I can't be happy without this other person. I can't have love in my life without them. Oh my God, I, I can't be prosperous without this job. Or I, you know, when, when we make false gods out here, we are overly attached. So I ask myself, where am I, and I hope you will ask yourself this week, where am I overly attached? Where do I tell myself I can't be happy without another person? Or where do I tell myself the source of my good is outside of me, the source of my happiness? You know, people's opinions, the material world, uh, what, uh, maybe I'm attached to what people think of me, right? But you don't have to do anything to be better, to be more lovable. This is what I love about the science of mind. Okay, really? What do you mean I don't have to do anything to be better, to, to be more lovable? Because spiritual truth is you are enough already. Nothing needs to be added. Right? We are diminished, I believe. We are diminished to the extent that we seek something to fulfill me. Because our message out into the universal mind is that I'm not okay right now, I'm not enough, I'm not complete. And we teach in the science of mind that who you are as a spiritual being is whole, complete, and perfect right now. We, we are not made more by the things of the outer world. That's, that's, that's just delusional. It is. You know, no form is good enough, is big enough to define you as a spiritual being. And the forms of the world are fine. 
We're not here to judge the forms, you know? We all are attracted to different forms, different manifestations, different effects. The universe supports our growth, though. Do not be deceived. It's an ever-expanding universe. We're reading about this in the Abundance Workshop. It's on Monday nights. You can still be with us at 7 p.m. on Zoom for that. But this is an ever-expanding universe, and you don't need anything to, to, to complete you as a person. I realize, you know, we can hide in a job, we can hide in a relationship. Um, and we do those things to not feel horrible things, right? Um, to not feel horrible feelings. We can live our life uh, watching TV or on the computer or shopping or doing whatever. But here's the thing. I, I realize that we do so much of that to not feel horrible feelings. But God loves us so much. Now, this is the truth. God loves us so much that things around us are actually in a process of crumbling. And you think, well, that doesn't look like God's love to me. And I say, well, well why? Is it, so, so we do not have any false gods. Ultimately, we are going to get to the place in our spiritual development where what we rely on is the principal power and presence of God that is within us, not outer forms. And there's nothing wrong with the forms, right? But where we're going to get to, where we are headed spiritually, is that God loves us so much that these things around us that we have relied on to feel secure and safe and happy, they're crumbling, so we will not continue to use them as a false god. And I know, if you're like me at all, and I suspect you are, I love lots of forms in the world. I do, but the truth is, you and I, we are complete right now with nothing added. See, becoming more conscious, it seems to me, is, is, is something in here that we let out, not something out here that we bring in. You don't become more conscious by adding something to you. You become more conscious, actually, by letting what is within you out into expression. See, because nothing can make you more. You're it already. We teach that. So acceptance of the principle of, of the living spirit you know, or acceptance of the principle of love. Let's call it that today, the principle of love. Acceptance of that principle, like Saul did, is a new self-perception. It's a new way of looking at ourself. I accept there is that within me that's already fine. I accept there is that within me that's already made it. I accept there is that within me which is already healed and whole and okay. And I want you to do the same. Because that within you which is healed and whole and perfect, that within you which is, ha has made it, that within you which is fine, was created by God. So we teach in Science of Mind that there is spiritual perfection within us already. And you could think of that like a, like a divine blueprint or a design, you know, that's always unfolding. Imagine a giant quilt that's always unfolding from every direction at the same time, revealing more and more of the story. If we think we need something outside of us, that perpetuates the myth that we're not enough already. So if I think, you know, once I have that car, I'll be okay, or once I have that relationship or that house, then I will be okay, that's a myth. That's really, really a myth. That's a falsity, because the truth is that we are enough already. We think, you know, well, I can hold on to this, you know, some little thing, some little pocket we have. Because if you're like me, you know, we let maybe some big things go, but then we find there are little pockets that we still kind of hold on a little bit. Do you know what I mean? You know, I think, all right, well, but again and again, we have to let even that go. Because the universe is supporting our growth. It does not let us hold on to stuff that's going to keep us small or weigh us down or held back in any way. It's not going to let us uh, be uh, burdened. So look, we teach you can have whatever you become in consciousness. And I think that is such a wonderful component of this teaching. Whatever you become in consciousness. So you can have whatever. Just don't be so attached to it. This, to me, seems to be the thing. I, look, I love the stuff in my life. I mean, if you know me, you know I love my stuff. I got great stuff. I love my stuff. But the trick is always to not be so attached to it. You know, things, things in and of themselves are fine. That They're actually nothing. But in the Buddha said that all suffering comes from attachment. And so the attachment that he's talking about is this over-attachment. Now, in life, of course, we're going to be attached to our parents. We're going to be attached to our children. 
on and on and on. Of course, we understand that, but that over-attachment where I cannot be happy, I cannot be fulfilled without, that's the mistake. See, I believe the greatest power God has given us is to change our mind. Like Ernest Holmes says, change your thinking and you will change your life. So when we get crazy about things going on in the outer world, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I get crazy about what's going on in the outer world, what that means to me is that I have forgotten who I am. I have forgotten as a spiritual being why I came here. And and what's important to remember is that we are all so much more than the current conditions, right? The current circumstances. And what we know about circumstances is circumstances are always, always changing. So what do, I I was thinking about this today, and I was thinking, why is it so much easier for us to focus on the negative again and again and again? And you know, nothing good comes out of negativity. You know that, I know that, we all know that, and yet so often that's our fallback. Well, why do we focus on the negativity? It's easy. We want to. You know, it doesn't take a lot of effort to just backslide into that. So I would ask myself, you know, why aren't we more committed to the good in our life, to the love, to the joy? Uh, Because, you know, what we appreciate increases. So what that means to me is this time of being in the virus is actually the perfect time to be looking at my life and appreciating everything that's good in my life. So whether it's just a beautiful day in Southern California, or I'm sitting in a comfortable chair, or I've got some great enchiladas for lunch, whatever it is, can I appreciate that? Because what you appreciate increases. And if we're going through this experience unhappy and, oh, it'll all be better when, we're going to be very, very disappointed. Like Paul, when we give up our attachment, life flows in new and abundant ways. So I think If the world is a certain way, this is the way I have been. If the world is a certain way, I will be okay. If the world is a certain way, I'll be happy. If the world is a certain way, I will feel secure and safe. And all of those things, we have to get it. You are okay, I'm okay right now. Hmm? And, 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 And if that's hard for us, a place to begin is every day make a conscious decision. You know what? I will be okay today because of my connection with God. Because I am always connected with God, I am always okay. Because the world is going to do what the world is going to do. And you say, well, yeah, but don't I have to do something? Yes, you do. It's essential that you do something. And where you have to do something is in here, in your consciousness, in your, in your spirit. right? Then You may be moved after you've done something with your consciousness. So what I mean is once you've prayed, once you've meditated, once you've affirmed, then you may be guided. You know, you say, spirit, is there anything here that's mine to do? You may be guided into action. Or it may be that you are just to be the consciousness that's holding the space for love and healing and peace and all those good things. See, it's this is what we have to come to understand, that doing, doing doesn't heal our lives. Consciousness does. And consciousness cannot heal what consciousness has not cultivated. So during this time, I've got to ask us all, what are we cultivating? What are we cultivating? Are we cultivating what's wrong or are we cultivating what's right? Are we cultivating the good we see and the love and the prosperity and the kindness in the world or the other way? Mm -hmm. Um, The prize isn't out here, right? For years, I have to admit that I thought it was. And I'm a little embarrassed to say that, but I was a very young metaphysical student. Uh, I have really thought, if I have certain things in the outer world, then I'd be happy. If I had certain things in the outer world, then I'd be okay, then I'd be enough, then I'd be worthwhile. But the truth is, I will be happy when, when I decide to be happy. And this is something we can do in the week ahead, and I'm going to ask us to do that this week, to make a decision every day, regardless of what happens, regardless of what the temperature is, or regardless of this, that, and the other thing, make a decision every morning, today I decide to be happy. Because in A Course in Miracles, it says happiness is is a decision I must make. See, this is my life. There is nothing that needs to be added to make it better. This is it. And we say, oh no, this can't be it. I had such ideas of things being so much better. But hey, just consider this as a possibility. What if we get down the road a year from now 
and we say, wow, wasn't 2020 paradise and we didn't know it when we had it? Hmm, just a possibility, you know? So we want to make the most of this time. We want to be as conscious as we can be during this time. Remember, sometime back, uh, a few years ago, there was, a, there was a big actor strike. And I remember talking to a lot of actors in our church community here, and, um, and people were saying, you know, it's so difficult, we're not working, we're not producing income. And I said, yes, but you know, at some point, the strike is going to end. And we all knew that. Everybody knew the strike was going to end. And when the strike ends, some people will be called back to work immediately. Some people will not. Some people, it will be no different than it was before. Do you want to be one of those people who's called back to work right away? Oh, of course, of course we all do. We all do. It's like, great, now what are you doing with your consciousness now? Are you treating for right and perfect work? Are you, no, you know, and all that stuff that we do. Are you praying and preparing yourself so that when opportunity knocks, you can hear the knock on the door? You're not in the bathroom with the sink running in the shower, and you don't hear the knock. <laughs> So many of us are concerned right now, particularly around abundance, you know? But abundance isn't something we get from outside of us. It comes from inside of us. This is the important thing to remember at this time. For all of us, the source of our good is never outside. The source of our good is always inside. We are connected with it. We could not be separate or apart from it in any way. It comes from inside of us. It's who and what we are. So I've asked you to make a decision this week. Every day, I decide to be happy, regardless of circumstances, and also to let go. You know, let go out here doesn't make us more, right? We are who we are. And it seems to me that if you've been on the spiritual path for any length of time, you know that after a period, it's not about adding to, that the spiritual journey becomes about letting go of, releasing, releasing, releasing this thought, releasing this belief, releasing this habit, releasing this idea, releasing what doesn't serve me, releasing my past. Oh my God, so much of the spiritual path is about letting go, not adding to. You're absolutely fine. Yes, you are. And so if we could come to a place of center within ourselves, you know, because in, in the center of our own being, in a centered place, we can ask, what's really important to me? Because without it, we will fall apart. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that we are surrounded and we are filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit. Think about that. A principle of divine intelligence that creates the entire universe also created each and every one of us. We are emanations of God. We are filled with God light, God love, and God consciousness. And I claim for each and every one of us today that just like Saul on the road to Damascus, we are filled with an experience of light that transforms us at depth, that we are changed from the inside out. And we no longer think that the source of our good is outside of us, but in fact, we know that everything Everything is within inside of us, within our body, mind, within our spirit, within our consciousness. It's all been provided. And so we include in our prayer today family members and parents and children, aunts and uncles, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, everybody in our tribe. We bring them into our prayer right now and we surround them with love and peace and healing. And we know that good, that God is right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So just imagine, if you would, an energy of love and light and healing emanating out from your heart and mind, out into the world, and in the most gentle, loving way, touching all people, healing them, lifting them up, returning them to wholeness, creating greater peace and greater understanding. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together. So I accept for each and every one of us this week that we are healed, that we are whole, that we are raised up, and that our life is good because our life is the very life of God. Thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am 
so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. This world keeps trying to bring me down, but I ain't listening to those crazy sounds. Got my own frequency, oh, got my own moves. When my groove, no wild hearts can't be broken. A wild heart, it beats inside of me. Wild hearts, oh, need to be free.
Jody Siegel. Thank you so much, Jody. Jody has her music available on her website, jodysiegel.com. So that's J O D I E S I E G. Pardon? G no E? Oh, sorry. How did I? Oh, I added one here. Sorry. <laughs> J O D I S I E G E L dot com. <laughs> thank you. So you can enjoy your music that way. And thank you so much to Sam and Karen for our wonderful musical support, Dean for leading our chants. A uh, few announcements. So we will have um, our phones will be available for you to call for the next 30 minutes if you'd like to make your donations over the phone. That's 818-762-7566. Or if you missed the link and want to do a donation online, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give. And of course, you can always mail in your checks, as many of you have been doing. And Thank you so much for all the ways that you continue to support us. Can't tell you how much we appreciate it. So we can continue to be here to support you. We have prayer with a practitioner available after the service on Zoom. Uh, so if you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website and get onto the Zoom link. And uh, so we will put you in a private breakout room with a practitioner for you to get prayer. And you can continue to send your prayer request to us via email prayer at nhcrs.org, or again, call the church office, and option four gives you ministry of prayer where you can leave a message. We check the emails and the messages every day, so our practitioners are all notified of your uh, prayer requests. Our Wednesday service this evening, as usual, meditation starts at 6.50 p.m., service starts at 7, and my topic this week will be lightening our journey. We invite you to stay informed and up to date with us through our website, weekly e-blasts, and monthly newsletters. If you haven't already signed up for our weekly and monthly uh, newsletters, you can do that on our website, and you'll get proactive notifications of what's going on here at the church, including Dr. Mark's 2020 Abundance Workshop that he mentioned in his talk. Uh, it started last Monday, but you can join uh, it's tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. on Zoom, uh, and it goes all the way through August 31st, and uh, the book that they're working with is The Art of Abundance, 10 Rules for a Prosperous Life by Dennis Merritt Jones, and the cost is responsible giving. I know we had a really great group on this past Monday, so we look forward to even more of you uh, coming together to grow your abundance consciousness. Um, grief support will be meeting today. Uh, this group facilitated by our practitioner, Carol Winokur, who's absolutely masterful at leading grief support groups that meets today at 1 p.m. via Zoom. Um, other things going on in Zoom, there'll be a Zoom virtual patio and reception line. We had that before. And then after the service with the reception line with Dr. Mark, myself, and Reverend Nadine, again on Zoom, Teen Church meets on Sundays and Wednesdays. The men's group meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. We have a Zoom meditation Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. And again, all of that, just go to our website to get the links to be able to join. Now, um, there's something I need to do. I need to give you, ask you, just take a second, please. Mesdames et Messieurs, nous voulons reconnaître tous ceux qui ont fait partie de notre événement vendredi soir. We were so grateful for all of you who participated in our event on a Friday evening. Hein? It was a, oh, c'était magnifique, hein? N'est-ce pas? C'était magnifique. It was so spectacular. And uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And to all the artists and uh, Diane Vincent and uh, Sam Krieger who organized it all. We are, there are no words. Il n'y a pas de mots. C'est comme ça. Merci. And now. <laughs> 
with that, I say we need to fill the room with a sense of peace. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.